Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Lightweight Java Game Library 3D Game Tutorial. And this week we're going to be loading 3D models that have been created in Blender or any other 3D modeling software into our game and rendering them. Hopefully you will have watched Thursday's tutorial about exporting models to OBJ files, so you should now have an OBJ file with the correct settings and the model's texture in the game's res folder. If you don't have a model to use, then I've put a download link to this model's OBJ file, Blender file and texture file in the description of this video. So let's get started in the code. So we're going to create a new class for the OBJ parser called OBJ Loader, and this is just going to need one method, which is going to take in the OBJ file, it's going to load it up, get all the data, and then return it as a raw model that our game can render. We'll also take in the loader so that we can load up the data to a VAO once we've, re once we've read it in. So, first thing we need to do is to open up that OBJ file. So we can do that with a file reader. So let's create a new file reader. And this needs a new file. So we need to get the file that the OBJ file is in. That's going to be in the res folder, and it's always going to be uh, .obj, so we can put those bits in already, and it just needs to know the actual name of the file. And we'll just catch an exception if that file isn't found, and then we'll print this error message to the screen, to the console. So now we can create a buffered reader to allow us to read from this file. So that's new buffered reader and that's going to take in the file reader. Now let's give ourselves a bit of space here. Um, there's just a few things we have to set up. Let's set up a string called line, that's where we're going to read in each line of the file to. Then we need a list of vertices which we're going to read in from the file and that's a, a vector 3f because vertices, vertex positions are 3D coordinates. Then we need a, a vector 2f list and that's going to be the texture coordinates, all the texture coordinates in the file that we're going to read in. We'll read them in to this list. Then we need another 3D vector list for the normal vectors which I mentioned in the last tutorial. We'll be using them for lighting next week. And then we need a list of integers, which is the indices. So let's now create a float array, because eventually we're going to need all the data in float arrays, because that's how our loader needs the data to be in order for it to load it up to a VAO. So let's just initialize the vertices array and the normals array and the texture array as well and we'll also need an int array for the indices array for the index buffer so let's put this all in a big try loop and we'll catch any exceptions that would come from an invalid file format we'll just print the stack trace to the script to the console so now we're going to have a infinite infinite loop that's going to read through the file until we want to break out of this loop. So every time it's going to loop, it's going to read the next line. And we're then going to break that line into separate parts. We're going to split each line at a space. And you, if you have a look at the OBJ file format, you should see what that would do. So we'll then check to see if the line begins with a V, which would mean it would be a vertex position. We'll also check if it doesn't begin with a V, we'll check if it starts with VT, which would be a texture coordinate. So we're just working out what the data in the line that we've just read in is. We'll also check if it's normals, or we'll check if it is a face. So if the line that we've just read in is indeed a vector, a vertex position, then we need to create a new vertex. We're going to read in the data from that line and create a new vertex. 
and to read in the, the data we just need to pass the float in the line that we've just read so current line 1 because current line 0 would be the V and then current line 1, 2 and 3 will be the actual vertex data so once we've got the vertex we can add it to that list of vertices that we set up earlier and we have to do basically exactly the same if the line is a normal vector if the line is giving the data about a normal then we need to read in the normal just like we read in the vertex position and then we'll add that to the list of normals if it is in fact a texture coordinate in the line then we have to read in the 2D text, uh, 2D vertex vector even and we do that in basically the same way just pass the float in element 1 and 2 of the current line because element 0 would be that VT if you have a look at your OBJ file you should see why that is and then we'll add that vector that 2D vector the texture coordinate to the textures list then if the line starts with an F that means we've moved on to the next section of the OBJ file we've read in all the data from the vertex uh, texture coordinate and normals so we've got all the data we need and now we can break out of this loop but first we're just going to set up the arrays now that we know the size of them so the texture array is going to be the number of vertices multiplied by two because of course each texture has two floats the normals array is going to be the number of vertices times three because of course each normal is a 3d vector so it has three floats and then we're going to break out of that while loop so we're then going to go into another while loop to loop through all those face lines the lines beginning with F that give the information about each triangle so while line is not equal to null so while we haven't reached the end of the um, file we'll first check make sure that the line does start with an F and if it doesn't we'll just read the next line and then continue back to that the beginning of this while loop so once we found a line that does begin with F so it's a face we're going to break the line up into three parts one for each vertex if you saw the last video you'll understand that uh, so we split at the spaces and that will give us a string array the first part of which will be the F and then the next three parts will be the three vertices of the triangle so vertex one will be of course in current line one and we're going to split that we're going to split that for each vertex at the slashes which will now give us a string array of numbers now we're going to create a quick private method down here because we need to do the same for each vertex so we don't want to code this three times so to process each vertex we'll call this method and this is going to take in the array the string array of vertex data like vertex 1 vertex 2 or vertex 3 that we've just created it's also going to take in the list of indices, the list of texture coordinates. We also need to take in the list of normals. And then we also need to take in the float array of textures, the float array of normals. And that is it. Um, oh, this should be vector 3f. So for each of these vertices this data for each vertex which tells us which texture coordinate and which normal vector are associated with which vector pos uh, vertex position we want to put these into the correct position in the texture and normals array so the first bit of data will tell us the index of the vertex position in the vertex positions list We'll also we'll have to minus 1 because the obj files start at 1 and of course our arrays start at 0. So we get the current vertex pointer which is going to actually be the index for this vertex so we can add that to the indices. And now we want to get 
the texture that corresponds to this vertex. So the texture index is in the second bit of the vertex data, so vertex data element 1, and that will give us the index, we have to minus 1 again, of the texture in the texture list, so we get that texture, and then we're going to add it into the texture array, but this time we're going to put it in the same position as the vertex position, but we're of course going to have to multiply it by 2, because each texture coordinate has two floats, and we have to do this for the Y position, the X position, and the Y position, or component of the texture coordinate, adding one for the second one. And we also have to actually do one minus the current Y position of the texture, because OpenGL starts from the top left of a texture, whereas Blender seems to start from the bottom left, which is why we have to do one minus that. Now we'll get the normal vector that is associated with this vertex and the index for that is in vertex data element 2 and again we have to minus 1. So we get the, the normal that is associated with this vertex and then we're going to put it into the correct position in the array of normals which will be at the current vertex pointer multiplied by 3 because normals are 3D vectors and we have to do that for the x, y, and z component of the normal, adding 1 to the pointer in the array each time. So that's going to sort out the texture coordinate and normal vector for the current vertex and put these values into the correct position in the corresponding arrays. So we'll now call this method for each of the vertices in the triangle that we're currently processing. So we'll call process vertex once for vertex 1, and then let's copy and paste that to do that for vertex 2 and vertex 3. So that will have processed the current triangle, and it will have sorted the normal and texture coordinates into their correct positions. And then, of course, each loop we have to read the next line. So, once we've finished reading the whole file, we have to close the reader. And then, at the end of all of this, we need to convert the vertex list into a vertex array, into a new float array. So, um, I'll do what's happened here. So, we have to create a new float, and the size of this. A new float array and the size of this float array is going to be vertices dot size because it's going to be the same size as the vertex list but multiplied by three because this time we're putting them in as floats not vectors and we also have to convert ah not again um, we have to convert the indices list into an int array So let's now copy across all the data. So we'll loop through the list of vertices and for each vector in that list of vertices we need to put them into the vertices array. We need to put each component of each vector into this float array, this vertex position array. So do that for the x, y and z components and that will do that for every vertex in the list and then we just have to copy across the indices data from the indices list into the indices array. So indices array element i is equal to indices dot get i and then we just have to return the loaded model which we can load using the loader method and put in the vertices array, textures array and indices array and that will return a raw model that our game can now use so let's go into the main game loop and let's do this so we can delete all of these uh, previous 
model data that we've used and the raw model we can now set to obj loader dot load obj model put in the name of your obj file so for me that is stool and we'll put in the loader as well and I need to change the texture that I'm using which is stool make sure you've got the correct textures and model files in your res folder I'm going to move it back to minus 50 Z and I'm going to just rotate it around the Y axis so we can actually have a good look at it and run that and there you go it has worked thankfully perfectly and that you can just about move the camera around to get a better look unfortunately we didn't add an up option to our camera so we can't go up but you can see that it's working there and that is all that we need really so hopefully that will have worked for you too. If you didn't understand what we just did, then please have a look back in the previous tutorial which will explain the structure and layout of an OBJ file in much greater depth and then have a look back through the code and hopefully you'll be able to understand what we've been doing in this video. So that is it for this week. Next week we're going to be adding lighting into our game which will be lovely and that video will be out next Saturday. Don't forget to also check out yesterday's devlog video about the work I've been doing in my game for the last two weeks. A link to that video is on the screen now. But yeah, thank you guys very much for watching this video. Do subscribe if you haven't already. Have a delightful week and I will see you all next time.